Hey guys, this is another edition of Paul Watch Garage. Um, just kind of gonna show you what kind of project I got going on here. First, on the 88 uh, GMC Sierra, um, previous video where I had a 7R4 that was uh, shifting in the third and not taking fourth, um, shifting third hard and not taking fourth sometimes. I don't know if it's starting out in second year or not, but uh, somebody told me they're known to do that if there's some governor problems. Uh, but I was working on this truck and I was told there's some um, relays that go to what two electrical plug-ins into the uh, transmission that may regulate the shifts and, uh, that were located around the ECM which is basically not being used um, that much right now because it went from a TPI to a 350 carbureted engine so really you know you got uh, spark and fuel and um, don't have all the electronics hooked to it no more and there's some relays right there but I was working on this project and then on my uh, LS 5.3 uh, Silverado here 1500 um, I just wanted to show y'all and I'm pretty sure y'all worked on it before on the uh, uh, heater cores are a pain in the butt to get out of these things and but on this one uh, there's a quick disconnect that uh, that little plastic thing like this is what they're supposed to look like when they're good and this is what they look like when the ends break off right here and it was on the uh, heater core which is right there on the firewall you can see if, if you don't know where a heater core is on a truck um, on these things when you pop the hood then you probably shouldn't be working on trucks so uh, I'm not even gonna go there but uh, anyway this right here was broke off and it was leaking and uh, you use a tool like this what you do is basically get this thing off it's hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time but anyway this thing while this is on the pipe you just take this and it opens up right here and go right back and behind it and it fits snug inside like this once it once it gets behind it and you push it inside, and when you push it inside, basically what it does is separate uh, those ends in there, or that fitting in there, around out from the uh, heater core piping, and you just pull it forward and it slides off. And then your other one, which is this one, you can get a Riley's for like eight bucks. You just push it and it snaps right in. And then you just hook your hoses and stuff back up. So if you ever got them leaking outside, out here, and there's no steam on the inside and you're losing coolant it's usually going to be from those two uh, quick disconnects uh, you get them at O'Reilly's for eight bucks you get this tool right here at O'Reilly's for about eight or nine dollars and it's an easy fix and you take it somewhere to a shop to have that kind of work done and they're going to charge you 100 150 bucks and say they did all this uh, voodoo stuff to get it to, to work and fix and um but you definitely do not want to have to change a heater core out one of these things. You pray to God that it's that uh, quick disconnect that's broke off or cracked. Because uh, you have to take every bit of this out. Even when you take the dash off, all the framing and everything that's under there has got to come out. And then you got to pull this freaking right here out this box. This you actually got the heater core inside of it completely out and pull it out from the top. And it is a BIH to get out. I would not want to do that in a million years. I'd almost, <laughs> I'd almost want to take a freaking torch and pull the motor out and cut a hole in the firewall and and uh, pull it out there and put a plate in there and pull the air conditioner and all that stuff out to get to it. I mean, it's that stupid to get to. But anyway, um, that's really all that is on that. You just, uh, like I said, use this tool. You can buy them at O'Reilly's. I don't even know what they're called. But uh, it's to get the quick disconnect off uh, the little piping that goes on the end of the uh, heater core. And uh, then you want to buy you some hose. I just bought a hose to replace one that came off, which is probably still good. But uh, anyway, that's just a short on that. I'm kind of working on both vehicles at the same time. This one is just troubleshooting. Um, I'm hoping that I don't have to rebuild the transmission. I was told the pump's good in it because it's actually taking all the other gears. And it does take third, but it shifts real hard into third. Uh, and then it revs up real high and it hasn't shifted into fourth yet. So I may not even have fourth, I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. Um, but I was told there's some uh, 
and there was no warning signs whatsoever it just did it one day and uh fluid's not burnt looks good and there's no metal in it there's some relays in there in the glove box that i was told it goes to the transmission some of there's one of them it if it blows it'll cause it not to shift right or something i'm not really sure i'm gonna have to research more on that but uh, anyway just a quick video on what i'm doing uh, still haven't went and bought that uh clutch fan yet and went and bought that bolt i'm probably gonna do it this weekend a christmas right around the corner it's just hard to uh, on a project truck to um explain why why you're spending christmas money on a project truck when you know i could do this any old time it's not really being used for anything other than a toy and the other thing i was going to do is on this fan shroud i was going to cut the fan shroud from right here all the way across and just use this upper part right here this part here that people usually cut out to hold the radiator in but when I, if I cut across it, it's going to hit here where the fan actually hit that and cracked it. And this will be no good. It'll look stupid sitting there. They actually sell some aftermarkets on eBay that are aluminum or metal that uh, they fit on the radiator here. It just comes out to grab a hold of this and holds this up in here. There, I think I saw one in there for about 30 bucks, 20 something dollars, 30 bucks, like four, be here within three to four days. So I'll probably end up buying the O'Reilly's electric fan and then buying that uh, piece of the fan shroud that people actually cut off and put up here. They actually make them aftermarket that are aluminum. It looks pretty neat, holds up better. But uh, that's it on this. Uh, hopefully if somebody's working on there, have a leak out here and they can't figure out how to get that coupling off, that's the tool you're gonna have to have that's in the help section at O'Reilly's. And it's in a package, it's staying in there just like this. And, uh, it's really easy to put on, really easy to take the tool off. I had it off in like two minutes. And um, if you don't have that tool, you're gonna be out here all day long trying to get that thing off. And you'll end up, some people say, oh, I use a screwdriver and a, some people say they're using a screwdriver and a pair of vice grips to get that off. Well, you break that heater core tube off, uh, good luck to you. Cause you won't have no heater unless you're willing to take a whole week in your sanity to get that dash out. I watched a guy do a video and he had five parts to that video. And he had he had a basket of bolts that had came out of this thing, all different shapes and sizes, and he didn't even bag them and put them, you know, what areas they came out of. Um, but anyway, hopefully that helped somebody. And this wraps up the edition of Paul Block's Garage. Thank you.